Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white tokens deck featuring four copies of Kaya Spirits Justice. Now, I've only recently finished reading Kaya since it rivals Questing Beast in length, but uh, in general you're going to use Kaya to make Spirit tokens with the plus one, then the plus two lets us surveil two and then exile a card from a graveyard, can be used as a graveyard hate, but on occasion we might want to exile a creature from our own graveyard, and that's where the lengthy passive ability kicks in, where we can turn one of our tokens into that creature we exiled from our own graveyard and it also has flying and that can be pretty relevant if we have some of our beefier creatures in the graveyard such as maybe a knight errant or especially the devouring sugar maw so we can turn a spirit into a 6-6 menace trample until end of turn and then finally the minus two is another very powerful mode on kaya where we can exile a creature we control to exile a creature an opponent controls so we can sort of alternate between making spirit tokens and then exiling opposing creatures and then Akaya is also supported by a bunch of token makers in this deck, including, as we mentioned, Devouring Sugar Maw, which we can first adventure on turn 2 to create a 1-1 human token and a food token. And that's also perfect to maybe enable a card like Warden of the Inner Sky, which can then tap itself the food token and the 1-1 one, one token to let us put a plus one counter on it and scry one and we can do the same with maybe a turn two resolute reinforcements or a novice inspector which leaves behind a clue token so lots of tokens being generated here and all those tokens can also synergize with kaya's passive ability and then eventually we can cast a Sugar Maw as a 4-mana 6-6 six, six with Menace and Trample. We do have to sacrifice an Artifact, Enchantment or Token. If we don't, we have to tap it each turn, but usually it's not too difficult to keep up, especially starting with our Food Token, which we typically don't need. And then at 1 mana besides Warden and Inspector, we also have two copies of the Veteran, gaining us a bit of life against aggro when making tokens is also pretty effective. And then another 2-drop is Jadar. Now Jadar doesn't work quite as well as our other 2-drops alongside our Warden, as we'll get the token end of turn, so that's too late to tap it to activate Warden. But having a repeatable 2-2 zombie token can also be pretty effective, can maybe sacrifice our zombie token to keep the Sugar Maw untapped, or we can exile the zombie to Kaya's minus ability so we can exile an opposing creature as well so there's plenty of uses for it and then we also have two copies of a right of oblivion which is pretty similar to kaya's minus two ability instead now on a two mana sorcery that can hit any non-land permanent so it can also exile artifacts or enchantments with it and we can even flash it back so if we surveil it into the graveyard with kaya's possibility that can also work out nicely and then at three mana we've got a full set of a wedding announcement first making a bunch of one one tokens or maybe drawing a few cards and eventually pumping up the team this used to be one of the best cards in standard and it certainly has fallen out of favor a little bit more recently since the format has sped up so you don't always have time to leverage all the different abilities but in any mid-range or control matchup it's still very useful and then a two copies of Lord Skitter, which can also build up an army of rat tokens while emptying the opponent's graveyard. And there's quite a few graveyard decks in standard nowadays that Lord Skitter can be quite effective against, especially now alongside Kaya, which can also keep the opponent's graveyards clear. And then a topping of our curve is a Knight Errant, which we can play pretty early on thanks to all our token makers, convoke it and try and hit some of our other creatures. Ideally we can convoke it for 5 by tapping 5 creatures so it can find additional copies of itself, but even doing it for 4 can still hit our Devouring Sugar Maw, which is still very nice. And then the mana base has a few utility lands, two copies of Restless Fortress as a creature land, and then Mirex can also pump out additional tokens. And then Cavern of Souls, usually naming human to make most of our creatures uncounterable. On occasion might want to name Horror to make the Sugar Maw uncounterable, and can also help with a double black. And then we've got a bunch more black-white dual lands, and then the channel lands for added utility. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, sure, we can keep this. Inspector on one, turn two, can either adventure the Sugar Maw, or maybe better play reinforcements. And then we should have Kaya on four. Put on black, a green. The one downside of going for reinforcements is that. If we want to cast a Sugar Maw, we may miss out on the adventure. But I think the added pressure here of the extra 1-1 one -one is worth it. Opponent gonna take out the Inspector, that's fine. Okay, so we won't necessarily have double black for Sugar Maw next turn. But we can adventure at instant speed. 
or we can sank our clue but i think uh, going for sugar mom makes sense and then preacher we can take out with either right or kaya kaya probably makes more sense so we actually uh develop our board a bit more Okay. Points at 15 and plays another preacher. And warden the draw. Okay, so I'm gonna wanna right of oblivion here, play warden, and then probably sank the food token. I guess never mind, we wanna play warden first. Let's just surveil with Kaya for now. And then Inspector's not the worst, or we could keep Cavern to cast Sugar Maw, even though it's likely gonna get taken out. Close call. We can also play Jadar next turn if that lines up better. Either way, Cavern seems fine. And then uh, probably no need to exile anything here. Alright, so now we can use Warden. Tap all these. Cavern's still fine. And then now we can write Preacher, getting rid of the food token. Okay. And get in for two. Now Kaya can minus two again if needed. Otherwise we can start making spirits. I guess there is a Restless Cottage, which could also get busy here. Could exile our right of Oblivion. Putin just takes out Warden instead. Okay, so Kaya makes a spirit, and then we can play Sugar Maw if we name Horror. Although I don't expect Sugar Maw to survive. Five mana. And a Glissa that we can get rid of with Kaya. Sugar Maw gets rid of probably just um, a clue token here. Lord Skitter's not bad either. Although we can't play both Jodar and Lord Skitter. Yeah, these all would have been pretty annoying creatures for the Boros deck to get past. So showing some of the advantages of black over red. And we'll go for Skitter. Hit for 8. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. Kaya doing a lot of work here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And uh, our hand could use something like a reinforcement to help us convoke Knight Errants. Of course, a third land will be necessary. For now we can play Inspector, turn to Inspector, or sack a clue to help hit our land drops. So it's not the worst. But uh, a very good draw can easily beat us. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Blue-black, as we draw another Inspector. Alright, so next turn's gonna be important to draw lands. If not, I may be forced to sack a clue. Angel, okay. I'm intrigued, so maybe for Atraxa, and our opponent's more of a combo deck here. Turn to Modern Age, could see them reenact the crime as we draw Kaya. And then if we do draw lanes next turn, probably start with Wedding Announcement, although Lord Skitter, I guess uh, clearing their graveyard could also be important. And Collector's Vault's next. So they won't necessarily be able to reenact the crime on turn 4, since Modern Age can no longer discard, and this costs them 2 mana. Okay, so I think Lord Skitter is going to be the play. And then Cavern, either on Human or on Horror, in case we draw the Sugar Maw. Human's probably more important when we have double Inspector in hand. So yeah, having a bit of graveyard hate in the main deck as opposed to the Boros version can also be relevant in matchups like these. So 
So opponents looking at Collector's Vault. They might wait until end of turn. And for now, Kaito. So they could have used Vault and still played Kaito, so they might have other plans. No also with Double Cavern, it's tricky to cast reenact the crime. Okay. So now Lord Skitter can attack, whereas we can still go double Novice Inspector, Convoke Knight Errants to get the most on the board as opposed to just playing a wedding announcement. Yeah, I think that's uh, the way to go. Lord Skitter exiles Unraveler in case they can reanimate it. Could also attempt to draw into another land here, but that seems a little greedy. Maximum Convoke, so we can potentially hit another Knight Errant. Oh, looks like I mistapped. Yeah, I should have uh, tapped the Inspector here. I let Auto Tapper take the wheel. So we missed out on a Knight Errant, which could be relevant, although with another one in hand, I kind of doubt it. What's more relevant is, I guess, we still only had Swamp untapped, so it's not like we would have been able to cast a Warden with it. Alright, Potence takes out Lord Skitter, clearly a thorn in their side. And now Collector's Vault. So we'll see. If next turn they can maybe reanimate something. Found a land. Kaya can also exile cards from Graveyard. Currently nothing too scary that we need to get rid of. But uh, yeah, if we get rid of the Vector Glider, it opens up more attacks. Or we could play Warden plus Wedding Announcements. It's going to be a while before we actually pump the team with it, though. So certainly have options. Let's say our opponent does reanimate something like an Atraxa next turn, then still having Kaya afterwards to exile it could be more important. For now... I guess we can just attack with Knight Errant, play Warden, play Wedding Announcement, convoke another Knight Errant, and then do we care about attacking Kaito? I guess if I send two rats, we can force them to chump to keep Kaito alive, which could be irrelevant. Opponent does want to keep Kaito alive. Okay. And then since we can convoke another Knight Errant, we'll just use the ward on a bunch. Don't need another Inspector. Jadar also doesn't seem needed, so we'd rather just draw a land at this point. Okay. So we'll see if they can reanimate an Atraxa here. Or if they have bigger plans. This card's Collector's Vault, uses Collector's Vault. And there's Atraxa. Okay, so we still have Kaya to answer it. And then the Siege the Mirror is gonna reenact the crime, get Atraxa. And then we can still play Warden next turn as well. But our opponent does have a pretty full grip. Okay, so opponent's at 13, 5, plus 7 12. So can we get there? We might be able to actually play Warden, activate the first Warden, tapping two clues and Warden up to 4, 10, 13, and then Kaya. Getting rid of the Warden we just played. Should do it. Sugar Moss, fine. Okay. 13 exactly. Okay, sweet. So yeah, keeping Kaya to answer our trucks that was pretty important. And then, um, yeah, there were a few ways we could have sequenced our spells earlier, maybe get an extra Knight Errant in play, but things worked out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And we've got a decent hand, hurt a little bit by the tap land, 
going turn one warden, turn two adventure would have been a lot better. But uh, yeah, I'll still keep. Can play fortress, turn two adventure, turn three maybe Lord Skitter. And then play warden on turn four. Now we can reinforcements instead of using the sugar moth we prefer. Put in blue whites and a ledger shredder. Could be the monastery mentor deck. So Lord Skitter for graveyard hate could also be relevant. Um, do we play around a counter spell? Do we just main phase our cards here? Let's just pass. Not too devastated if they counter any of my two drops. Another Shredder. Okay, so they likely have a cantrip here to connive. No, they don't. So, if they have a Spell Pierce, we get punished for using the half for dinner. But it's possible that we want to play Sugar Maw turn 4. So then going turn 2 Adventure, turn 3 Lord Skitter, turn 4 Sugar Maw. It could work out better, so we don't lose any value. And it's not like my 1-1 skin attack here anyway. So now Wedding Announcement's also an option. Better than Lord Skitter. The extra bodies are better for Convoke purposes. But this will eventually pump the team. Still gonna be difficult to keep up with Ledger Shredder, so let's just play Lord Skitter. And go wide. Eventually Warden can maybe catch up to the Ledger Shredders. But likely means we're gonna be double spelling. So then they'll get to connive as well. Storm Chaser Drake. So not quite the Monastery Mentor deck I had in mind. More of a maybe Aura deck that tries to go all in on one creature. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I could just cast a Sugar Moth. We don't want to let them connive. Put something big in play that they'll have to deal with. Lord Skitter makes another token. Or we can... Kind of go crazy here, play Double Warden, play Reinforcements and Convoke Knight Errant. Definitely applies more pressure and is not solved by a single removal spell. And then we kind of get all these cheap spells out of the way so they won't be able to trigger Connive in the future, hopefully. I guess I want to make my token first, just to make sure Lord Skitter triggers. Although I guess if we... Cast our stuff first, Lord Skitter could maybe actually exile something from the graveyard, which may or may not matter after our opponent connives. Cast reinforcements. And we'll have a look at what they discard, which might give us a bit more information on what they're up to. Virtuoso discarded, so yeah, it's definitely one of those or uh, pump spell decks. And then we'll still have enough things to activate Warden once. Okay, find another Knight Errant, and at this point probably Jadar. And Kaya looks good as removal. Okay. Pass it back. Opponent did nothing with the one mana, so likely holding a protection spell, maybe a Loran's escape. So that makes Kaya a little bit more questionable. Okay, opponent does bring back Virtuoso. Call a surprise witness. So yeah, it turns out had we maybe let him connive first and then trigger Lord Skitter, we could have exiled it. Ledger Shredder hangs back. And our opponent goes for an acrobatic leap. They're maybe hoping to hit another lane drop so they can keep up their one mana instant. But they didn't hit a lane drop, so now Kaya could uh, potentially exile one of their creatures. 
And then we still have to make a few decisions here. Are we more scared of Virtuoso or a Ledger Shredder? At this point it might be Ledger Shredder, even though Virtuoso has more potential to kill us out of nowhere with a few pump spells. But we can at least attack into the Virtuoso with some of our creatures. Yeah, we can still convoke a Knight Errant, activate a Warden at least once. So yeah, let's just play Kaya. Minus two. Come in many and then Knight Errant. Ready to die. That's why so many stick around after they do. Opponent does get to connive, but only once. And then Lord Skitter can exile one of their cards. And then Warden can activate once more. Found another Skitter and Inspector. Swamp could be useful as an extra lane. Question is, do we need to dig towards another removal spell instead? Which may be more important at this point. Although again, our opponent likely has some protection spells in hand, so this was a rare opportunity to actually land a removal spell. So in that case, I could see land being useful, so we can potentially uh, double spell next turn. And then, does it matter here? I guess Virtuoso over Shredder. And then don't have a great attack. So yeah, this 4-6 uh, Shredder doing a good job on defense. Don't have any way to interact with our flyers right now. They likely take out Kaya, and then we'll see what else they can do. Shore up the Virtuoso. So possible they're just going for a one-hit KO with a Virtuoso. Shore up, discard it, another protection spell. They hit a lane, three cards left. And our opponent goes for it, so this is 10 in the air. Shore up is plus at least 2, could be plus 4. Yep, yeah, so one more pump spell likely does it here. And I guess they also connive with a shredder. So this is 15. And auspicious arrival will be lethal. Alright, that's too bad. We were starting to make a bit of progress, but yeah, lots of big flying creatures. So combo kill us here was quite effective. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Inspector turn two, half for dinner. And then uh, turn three, at the very least we can sack our clue and play veteran. But we might have better options. I guess we could convoke a Night Errant as well. Just won't be for the maximum amount. Put in blue-black. At least we can use this at instant speed. Makes a counter spell a bit more awkward. Very mastermind. Alright, I guess we'll make sure this resolves. So blue-black mid-range with uh, Gix and Shieldred, maybe, or Esper Legends. Alright, so yeah, we could go Veteran, Convoke Knight Errant. Better opponent likely has some interaction here. The alternative is passing and then sacking a clue in their turn, so we don't trigger Mastermind. I think I go for Knight Errant just to maybe bait out a counter spell and apply a bit more pressure. And then Kaya could get in the way of the Mastermind by making a Spirit. Could also play Sugar Maw and make it uncounterable. More likely to be removed than countered, I would say. I think we, uh, Want to give Kaya a try, even though now Anchorage can also pressure it. Yeah, if they have another counter, it feels better to just go for Sugar Maw. So 
So that resolves, we gain one, and we'll see if they can remove it end of turn. They cannot. So they were likely sitting on another counter spell, although now Deep Cavern Band can take Kaya. So who knows if things would have worked out better the other way around. Well, at least we have our 6-6, six, six, which can apply a good bit of pressure. Can sack a food token, I would say. And find another Sugar Maw. So attack all out, and then I think we just hard cast another 6-6. Six, six. While it's uncounterable, especially. Opponent trades for veterans, so they must have a counter for Kaya. And we're gonna give them another Sugar Maw instead. Even though we second main Sugar Maw and we missed out on one life gain, our opponent likely would have made a different play had they known about Sugar Maw in the first place. And yeah, our opponent concedes too many 6 6 beaters for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Can I uh, make a few tokens, use Kaya. Yeah, I mean, doesn't have a clear plan on how to win the game, but uh, we can go up the ground and then try and leverage our Planeswalker. For now, play Jadar. Opponent seems to have a bounce spell for one mana, or maybe a cantrip. So they might be on mono blue, fading hope. Okay, so takes a little bit of the wind out of our sails. Now if our opponent keeps up a counter spell, I would rather play reinforcements at instant speed. Lord Skitter very likely gets countered if we play it. But if they have a cantrip, they will be able to deploy it here. So maybe getting Jadar countered is not the end of the world. Or we can try and force a reinforcements through which does set up Kaya if we need to minus, but I don't think our opponent's going to be playing something like Haughty Jin on curve. I think I'm okay just baiting out a counter spell here. Since I would rather resolve Lord Skitter. Or Kaya for that matter. Now we could double reinforcements. Which is mana efficient and potentially wastes the opponent's mana. Hopefully they don't have a cantrip here. They do. Alright, that's too bad. So they get to develop their game plan. They might be scared of committing a creature into four open mana. And then now we get on the board with the reinforcements at least. And then next turn, can try to resolve something impactful. Lord Skitter. Yeah, I guess we'll get that countered now. We have a backup. Shrinking the opponent's graveyard is also relevant when they have cards like Haughty Jin and potentially Tolarian Terror, which relies on instants and sorceries in the graveyard. So they don't want to let Lord Skitter resolve if they can help it. Or they might bounce it here. Okay. So they're out of counter spells, it seems. Which means their hand is probably pretty threat dense. So we're likely gonna see a creature hit the battlefield here. Tolarian Terror, first one. And our opponent keeps up three mana. Okay, I'm still down to try a Lord Skitter again over wedding announcements. Especially if they have something like a negate in hand, which can hit or non-creature spell. Do they have another bounce spell, maybe? They don't. And then we want to hit an instant or sorcery here. Don't have any great attacks. And our opponent's got another Thirst for Discovery. So the opponent's late game can be very powerful, especially if they're playing Flow of Knowledge. Letting them draw for each island they control, and then Haughty Jin flying over to deal massive amounts of damage, especially when they can protect it. Would love to resolve Kaya to start making spirits. 
pretty far from being able to double spell, which is where we want to be against Mono Blue, trying to resolve multiple relevant threats in the same turn. The Warden of the Inner Sky, for instance, would be pretty nice to play alongside one of our three drops, as our opponent considers. So if they pass with 5 mana, they most likely have a flow of knowledge. So now is not a bad time to resolve something impactful, because if our opponent wants to counter it, they won't be able to cast flow. So we'll give Kaya a try. Can maybe double 3 drop with another untapped land at least. Opponent negates, as we suspected. The Lord Skitter triggers. And we're at a point where we can maybe attack all out. As we get one rat token every turn, of course, Lord Skitter can hang back. So we essentially get in for four. Alright, the game continues. Opponent with another Thirst for Discovery. That's too bad. So they're pretty close to sculpting the perfect hand here. I'm surprised we haven't seen Hottie Jin yet, but there it is. 7-4 Flyer. And they might have Flow of Knowledge that they can still cast for 4 mana here. And then once they find the Blue March, they can uh, potentially phase out multiple creatures. Opponent going for a Moment of Truth, so they don't have Flow of Knowledge available anymore. But maybe they don't need it here. Terror Attacks. And a veteran is a draw. So we'll play veteran. I guess announcement first, since we can pay for a conditional counter spell. But we do want to play veteran before Lord Skitter triggers, so we get an extra life point. And then, yeah, I think we keep attacking all out here. Although we could be dead to Tolarian Terror alongside Haughty Jin. Next turn, I guess Veteran could jump if needed. And then the Flyer could also get in the way of Haughty Jin. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they have the Blue March to close out the game. So we will draw off Wedding Announcement end of turn. Slip out the back. So our opponent's going in for the kill here. Did draw Kaya, but they likely have a way to protect Origin if they don't just straight up win the game here. Maybe making a Flyers better than trying to take out their creature. Opponent bounces Veteran. So now I'm forced to chump with Lord Skitter. Okay, don't have a choice. And another terror on defense. Okay, well, what are our options here? I can play Kaya, make a spirit to trump Haughty Jin, which is maybe more realistic than trying to take it out. Although we're still facing double Tolarian terror, which also forces us to chump block uh, with veteran. We'll gain one off wedding announcements, so we're at six so at least. Tolarian Terror isn't lethal by itself. I guess we'll gain one more from the token. Yeah, I mean, we'll start here, see if this resolves. If not, we're just dead. They might have another negate. Make disappear, sacking Tolarian Terror. Yeah, that'll do it. So I can play Veteran. Gain a life, but at six we're uh, far from surviving a Haughty Jin attack. Okay. There's nothing I can draw into at instant speed with the wedding announcement that saves me. Don't have go for the throat, for instance. Well, we did get our opponent down to four, and they were down to one card in hand, so ended up being closer than I thought it would be. But uh, Haughty Jin will go the distance. GG's. Opponent's got nothing to fear. On to the next one. Now 
Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Could either start with Warden or Inspector. I'll make it Warden in case we draw a relevant uh, two drop. I guess we could also just adventure Sugar Maw, which is a bit more mana efficient than Inspector. And then postpone the decision on Cavern, which might want to name Horror, but more likely to go for Human. And then now Warden can activate to Scry. Find reinforcements. I think we're looking for Knight Errant or Kaya, something impactful since we can play announcement next turn already. Opponents, Mardu, Colors, and Jadar. Okay, maybe a sacrifice deck. So for now, play Wedding Announcements, and then Warden can activate once again. And there's Kaya, we'll keep that one. Could still double spell Inspector plus Announcement, or maybe play Sugar Maw, but Kaya's a nice option in case we need to deal with a key threat. Bone's got three mana, and there we see Vran. Right, I think could have played that first main phase to trigger the ability, but uh, opponent is indeed on a Sacrifice type deck. So how do we want to proceed here? If I play Sugar Maw, it likely gets removed, so it doesn't really progress our game plan too much. Not opposed to Announcement plus Inspector, kind of gum up the ground a bit more before playing Kaya. And they might play something even more impactful, although Sacrifice decks typically don't have too many expensive creatures for us to take out. And this can name Horror, so I maybe don't take as much damage when casting Sugar Maw in the future. So, yeah, play Inspector. Can uh, activate Warden here. And our own Jadar. Not the best. I think we can do better. And then we can head for four. Play another announcement. And yeah, these kind of mid-rangey matchups announcement really shines. And then could keep Warden back on defense as opposed to using it once again. But uh, the zombie is probably attacking anyway. If they have removal, they take out the Warden. So may as well get another Scry and bottom the swamp. And Anim Pakal can also make a bunch of tokens here. Avran even gets busy, so possible they have some one mana instant here to get in the way of a double block. I think we just trade for the gnome and then take essentially six after Vran triggers. And then Kaya can deal with Anim. Now we are starting to fall pretty low from all these Vran triggers. But Anim's pretty scary, so that has to go. And then Warden can activate once again. We can always gain three with our food token, and Knight Errant is exactly what we were looking for. Okay. Attack with Warden, and that's it. Even though we could draw with the Wedding Announcements, I think I prefer the extra tokens on the ground when we're about to transform them. And uh, sure, we can activate Warden once again. Even though we're happy drawing the Knight Errant, it's just for the extra counter. Although do we prefer extra blockers? Maybe I do, actually, to protect uh, Kaya. Even though we get two more end of turn. You never know. Ooh, Gex's command. Well, at least they also lost their creatures. But they did wipe our entire board, making Night Errand look a little bit worse. 
So Kaya can make a spirit. Then if I reinforcements, I can still convoke Knight Errant. So that looks good. So we're back on the board. Even though we sadly can't select Knight Errant here, still found two creatures, so that's good. Make another one end of turn, and it's as if nothing happened. Kaya can minus two if needed, and that's enough for a concession. So yeah, the power of wedding announcement plus Kaya here. Alright, so we got to see our black-white tokens in action, and somehow dodged the mono reds and Boros Convoke matchups, which is pretty surprising since they make up such a large portion of the best of one meta, and I was kind of looking forward to see black-white versus red-white, but in general I think Boros is still the better of the two archetypes, just because it has more explosive starts with Gleeful Demolition, and then the Recruiter or Author Anthem effects can close out the game a little faster than you can with Wedding Announcement, which is a card that lends itself more to kind of mid-range and control matchups as the value can accumulate over time but it doesn't immediately pump your team so if you're just trying to be as fast as possible then uh, I think you're better off playing Boros but we've seen a few matchups where you can see the advantage of playing black over red as you've got access to a bit more graveyard hate and better removal that can also deal with large creatures like Atraxa so there could be a meta where you want to shift into black white tokens over red white if you want to slow things down a little bit and play more of a value game but at that point you can of course play a bunch of other decks as well that fit that description. So yeah, interesting deck, and uh, Kaya definitely had some cool moments, but overall not the most impressive standard deck we've featured so far. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!